Hello there. Um, so this is a tutorial that's going to show you how to uh, export uh, static meshes out of Blender and uh, getting it, get it into Darkest Hour. So what you're going to need first is Blender. I'm assuming you've already got Blender at this point. Um, I'm using 2.9. The um, the add-on was created for 2.9. I think it also works for 2.8, uh, but just get the latest one. It doesn't. There's no reason not to get the latest one uh, at this point. So, uh, how are you going to get it? You're going to go to GitHub.com. Uh, you can search for IO Scene ASE all of GitHub, and you'll see uh, the one that's for Darklight Games, that's us. So we gotta download this add-on. If you go over to the right, it'll be under releases. Just get the latest one, this zip file here. So click that, save that. Ends up over here in my downloads. Uh, right, yeah, so that's, that's fine. And now I'll I'm gonna go install the add-on now. Um, let's make sure I don't already have it. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm gonna remove that for now. This is what you'll be doing. Uh, install, go to wherever it ended up, which I guess is that one there. So now I'll have a new entry called uh, ASCII Scene Export. Make sure to click this. Um, yes, now if you go into the export, uh, file export menu, you'll find the uh, ASCII scene export right there. Uh, so what we'll do, just for a demo, let's add in a uh, monkey. Uh, let's make him smooth shaded. And just for fun, I'm gonna add a subdiv and apply it. There we go. So we can see that we've got uh, we've got our monkey here. Now, when you export anything, it has to have, or for ASE uh, specifically, uh, it has to have material. So you can't just have no material. If you try and do it, it will complain and says, uh, say that the mesh must have at least one material. So, okay. Now, don't also don't leave it like this because uh, you'll get another kind of error, which is that the material slot cannot be empty. So just make sure you've always got uh, that you have material slots and that they're all not empty, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, and I think I will, just for the hell of it, throw a color grid on there. There you go, there's our colorful monkey. Um, so now let's actually export this. It's got UVs, it's got all that. So we go export ASE, call this Suzanne.ase, that's the name of the monkey. So the, the, only, the only option right now, um, after I just finished making the, the add-on, so the only option that it has is to export in meters um, so that means if you have, uh, you know, a one by one by one cube, it'll export as a one by one by one meter cube uh, to the game. If for whatever reason you need to deal with Unreal units, which is, uh, uh, I think one Unreal unit is, or sorry, 60 Unreal units is a meter, you, just, <clears throat> you have the option to switch it to Unreal. But, you know, 99 times out of 100, you're just going to want to use uh, meters. So just leave it at that. Hit uh, export. Okay, now if we go into the editor, go to our statics, static meshes. Uh, let's also load up a level while we're at it. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's find that one that we just made, Suzanne. Hit OK. Find her, and bam, there she is. Now, just to prove that the UVs do, in fact, work. There she is. So now let's throw her in the game. Build that lighting, and bam, there you go. Uh, so there's one other thing you need to know. Um, if you ever export a static mesh uh, that's not purely decorative, you're always, almost 100% of the time, going to want to have a, a, a custom collision mesh and a karma mesh. Uh, those are kind of one and the same. Karma is the physics system. So like tanks and stuff will interact with the physics box that you export out of it. Right now, this thing has no physics. Uh, so a tank could just roll right through this, or it would kind of glitch out and bounce around as it uh, as it went through the monkey head. Uh, so what we'll do, you can explicitly uh, make a collision mesh um, for these things. It has to be exported, or sorry, it has to be under a separate object. So let's make let's make a. Cylinder, not a very complicated cylinder, please. And I'm going to set the display to be wireframe so we can see through. Okay. Let's say, I don't know, for some reason we wanted our collision to end up looking like this. So the uh, if you want to export this as a collision mesh, um, you have to give this thing the name of, it's kind of a weird name, mcdcx underscore and then anything. Um, this prefix here, this mcdcx, will... Uh, signal to the exporter that this is a collision mesh, uh, and so it'll be imported as collision rather rather than as geometry. Uh, so let's go then and select both of our uh, objects now. We'll export as ASE. Overwrite the one that we had. See, on the, on the old one that we imported, there's no collision at all. But when we import this new one, it's going to say, Karma Collision Data Found, do you want to add it to the static mesh? You say yes. And it says, uh, there you go. So yes, it's added that. And then there's the collision mesh. Uh, so if you went up to this thing in game, uh, it wouldn't behave like you couldn't get like under this here, um, it would act as basically a, uh, like a cap cylinder like this. Uh, so that's how you're going to want to do it for basically everything. If you've got a uh, like a bridge or a house, a multi-level house that's a static mesh, always, always have a separate collision mesh. Otherwise, uh, bodies will ragdoll through the floor. You see this on some maps like a bridges or whatever, uh, some custom static mesh bridge. People will fall through it because nobody ever made a, a collision mesh for it. So uh, be sure to do that. Um, otherwise, this thing is really straightforward. Um, so yeah, if you've got any other questions, just hit me up in the Discord and I can, I can help you out. Have fun.